Alright guys, what is up? I'm here in a game between Elephant Gun and the Ravager. Um, this should be a really interesting game just because um, Elephant Gun is a very good player. And uh, the Ravager is a very old player, but also very good. At least he used to be back in the day. Obviously, when you uh, start playing the, the game again, uh, it takes a, quite a long time to get back into, learn all the abilities. And um, a lot of these old players, <clears throat> what's interesting is... So, you know, they don't take the time exactly to come back into the game. So they, um, you know, compared to somebody who is good and plays the game a lot, the that person will win, right? But these people also kind of just have a very natural knack for the game. Um, these players, like the Ravager, they just know um, how to kind of play these types of strategy games. Where, um, what you'll see a lot of new players do is they kind of just, I've said this before, I've said this a few times, this is a very big thing when getting good at this game. Is new players love to just click. And they'll click and be like, attack. And what you'll see by old players, or just good players in general, is you'll see that they always um, think their turns through before they do anything. They uh, they don't click anything yet, They kind of or they don't uh, do anything super quickly, they just, um, wow, look at that perfect kill. That was his, Perfect kill right there by Elephant Gun. I wonder if he did actually uh, calculated that. It wasn't there from the beginning. That was an amazing kill. 30 and then 693, right? So 18. And then the pounce. That was a very good kill there. Uh, but yeah, so like I was just saying, the, the, the older players, they know how to, um, you know, think their turns through and uh, think logically and uh, think about, like, the bigger picture of things, of uh, what they what they should do. Um, that kind of stuff. Anyway, so, first of all, I want to say I don't think he's actually too, too far behind uh, the Ravager, just because that was quite a bit of Nora in, rel or in um, ability, uh, what am I saying, uh, equipment, right? So he used the Rock Collection as well as uh, this Reaper's Blade. Reaper's Blade is quite an expensive um, equipment. It's like, I don't know, say 40, 40 Nora maybe. So he wasn't able to um, Deploy. He got the kill, and these equipment also, you know, will have more uh, value later. So, uh, okay, what does he have here? He could be doing an invoke. Not that that's amazing or anything. Yeah, he's probably doing an invoke here. So there's the invoke, just 10 damage. 10, 10, 10. He also gains 3 AP, and he gets the uh, plus 1 damage. So he could go, it actually doesn't go on the attack chain. So could, yeah, okay, so he's just going to retreat. He could have attacked, but he decides not to. Um, yeah, so as we see, like, it's still 3 versus 3. Um, but we do have to watch out for this rock collection. Could come out soonish. And obviously, this uh, whole um, cleric, of, um, cleric of Unrest, sorry. Um, usually is extremely bad dealing damage, right? They have 8 base damage, it's very low. But with the Reaper's Blade, they have some nice damage, actually. He can Invig. Right of Healing doesn't really work here, unless he wants to kill his own champion. But yeah, so if if we see uh, the Ravager maybe just deploy. I mean, he is playing a very... Like, this deck from Elephant Gun is very interesting. We have the Armory, so we have to assume, and we already have two equipment, but we have to assume a lot of equipment, a lot of relics, because what this Armory does, I'm going to read it to you guys, when this relic is deployed, concealed equipment runes in your rune dock are revealed. So that's first of all awesome. If you have like six or seven uh, equipment, that's a, a lot of reveal because uh, which just you know opens up your possibilities. Uh, all right, all right. Um, your equipment and your your okay. So when you deploy an equipment rune, you are refunded for Nora uh, forty percent of the Nora. When your equipment is destroyed, cooldown is reduced by two. So, also 40% reduction, I didn't even know that. So instead of this being a, a 40 Nora Reaper's Blade, it's much less. That's pretty awesome, I didn't, I didn't even know about that. That's yeah, actually really good, that just gained loads of Nora. With a 40 Nora Reaper's Blade, that gained like 10 Nora, basically, right? So this is now a 25 Nora, and then he had this, and there's the cooldown reduction, really not a bad, a bad uh, relic here, this armory. This is also just really cool. Um, it's kind of sad where you don't have too many people playing games anymore. But it's just cool that, uh, you know, you have still, like, kind of really cool um, decks being made. It's like this equipment deck. Like, you don't see too many, and relics, obviously. This is, is it equipment and relics? Equipment, only equipment, okay. 
those relics as well, but so yeah, do we have that unholy tomb? Ooh, and the ice chest. So we do now know this is a frost deck. I guess I could have assumed that um, from the start, just because there was quite a bit of frost. Actually, no, I couldn't. Have, well, I guess the Yeti Spirit. I could have said. I could have uh, thought it through and said, "Hey, Yeti Spirit mostly is in frost." But these guys are also kind of just meta champs, right? The Farron and the Savage Doombringer. Look at that. He does six damage or six health. Sorry, he does have that Death Nova though, so. If you were to die, he'll do that damage back. Has to watch out about that. All right, so there's the Blood Phoenix. Interesting. Is he dead from the Eviscerated? He is. So the Eviscerated should kill this Yeti Spirit, right? Because of the Blood Tracker. Ooh, putting the rel uh, the relic down last is actually kind of a bad play because he maybe could have gotten this uh, Norgo, but it's fine. It is fine. All right, so there's yeah. So he does die. Uh, the relic, yeah, the relic is a hit. So this um. Lassar and Vex was hit for 15 damage because, so like I said, we do have right now um, quite a bit of amp out. We have at least 30, 35, right? Because this is 20, 25 right here, right? Where does it say that? Come on, ice shard, yeah. So plus 25% for uh, ice damage, and then this is another plus 10. Uh, so we do have 35 right now. Smack. All right, so we could go in here and get this normal globe and smack the gladiator. Not a horrible idea. If he plays a spell, it's pretty good, I think. We're gonna, oh, he's gonna put the aura, okay. He's dead, right? He should be. 30% of six, oh, that's not that's not enough. He needs 100%. He was 100%, or sorry, 50, 50%. <laughs> there's the, okay, there's the spell I was wondering. Kills the relic too, so they took even more damage. So yeah, it's still three versus three. Um, these two Nora Globes though are open, and we do have a equipment uh, bonus, or we have a equipment advantage here. But on the other hand, we do have this relic advantage. But on the other hand, we also have these two relics. So it's very even right now. It's three versus three, two relics versus one relic, um, and then one equipment versus zero. But these champions are stronger than these. Yeah, even though the Blood Phoenix is quite strong, because he will come back. All right, this Norglobe right here will be will be Elephant Guns. All right, there's the uh, Invigorate again. Might have been a good idea to Invigorate. Yeah, nah, nah, that's fine. Ah, uh, okay, Hex. Now he's gonna get this Norglobe. Yeah, get snow globe. Now he couldn't get the snow globe down here as well. He did just make sure not to go this way, or else he'll hit the uh, font. So he wants to go this way and then down. Um, what is scary here though is if he does get the snow globe, he's in double tap range from the snow spinner. Ooh, sixteen damage. Look at that. This uh, this reaper's blade has been doing a lot of work here because of the uh, all these base HP. The base HP of ST is so high that the reaper's blade is really showing what it can do. So ah, he missed. Yeah, he messed up. He should have gone, if he wanted that Norgo, he should have gone the other way first. I'm not sure why he went into this font. Either he should have ran away or gone the other way. So this might have been a misplay there. Yeah, he's going to kill him now. Actually, that's a pure, uh, perfect kill as well because of the minus one armor here. So if he wants to kill with the snow spinner, that is. Which is fine, right? You can just attack with the snow. Unless he wants to use the heal, maybe. Is that why? Okay, yeah. So he's not going to attack with the snow spinner just so he can heal with him instead. He's using the uh, Nora a bit differently. Or the, uh, sorry, the AP a bit differently. A little different. All right, all right, all right, all right. You know, it's weird. Sometimes when I, uh, when I, you know, um, observe these games, I kind of just get into like a monologue. Like I, I'll like kind of zone out, and I'll come back, and I'll be like, "Holy shit, was I just talking for thirty minutes straight, like a a fucking wall of text?" Um, and I'll be like, "Huh, that was pretty impressive." Um, and that's one of those cool things that I've actually learned over now what four or five years of making these videos. I have a lot of videos, guys. I have like 400 videos or 300 videos of Pox Noir games. Um, and I didn't really, at first I kind of just did it for fun, but I actually kind of learned st stuff out of it. I, I think my like public, not public speaking, I've always been okay at public speaking, so I'm not really nervous. But uh, just kind of this, like the idea of just being able to monologue and just talk and talk and talk without really thinking, I've uh, improved that. Even though I'm not sure if I was ever bad at that, but it's fun. It's cool. It's a cool idea. I mean, of course, it helps that I really know a lot about Pox Noir because I've played it for so long. And I, and I love the game itself, so I have a lot to talk about, but the idea is still cool that I have uh, learned something here from from this game, or at least from, from recording, put it that way. Alrighty. Okay, now we have another equipment. We have that Bone Circle Staff. That does mean he wants this Rube Ball to survive. He has a lot of Nora right here, right? Because the Rube Ball, 93 by itself, so quite expensive. But with this uh, 25 Nora Bone Circle Staff, you know, it makes me more expensive. It's a little bit, a little bit scarier. So if you lose this, 
No, I'm sorry. If you lose this guy, uh, you know, it's a lot of money down the drain that he has to watch out for. It. And he's not, he's, uh, yeah, he's outside of the attack range from the snow spinner, very good. Because if you get a double tap by the snow spinner, then the uh, the fair and focus will do a lot of work. So it'll do first frozen and then uh, slowed. So that's minus three speed. It's crazy. I actually really like Farron. Just like as, an, uh, as a theme of just smacking things and slowing everything down by doing that, it's actually really cool. And, um,. They have a lot of really fun abilities in itself, like in the theme as well. So not only the fair and focus, but they also have like this uh, whole like swap under theme where they have like uh, swap and then portal watcher and that kind of stuff. Um, you can also go the monk route where you go monks and then have a lot of that. Ooh, okay, there's the gale force and this is what he was scared of. That's why he was outside of the range. Now he gets double tapped. He'll be at minus one defense he's at 38 right now. Double tap. He's at 30, 31 even. Okay, that could be evasive, right? So he wants to get in range, or sorry, uh, get into a, uh, uh, he doesn't want to be ranged, put it that way. He doesn't want to be in range, he wants to go one more. All right, so he's putting the aura on the Doombringer. Move this way. He'll do 13 damage. There's the 13. Now he's not dead to the aura at the moment, right? This is, this is no, yeah, there's no, no damage here. Because right now, we've, like I said, we still have 35%. Yeah, he's, exactly, he's two life left on this Rook Ball, but it doesn't really matter. Rook Ball will die next turn. I don't see any way in which he can either run away or get healed. Even with the Invigorate, um, there's so many spells in ST Frost. So, uh, this Rook Ball surviving, or gonna die next turn. And like I said already, this is so much HP in here. Or sorry, Nora. So much Nora in this champion. You really need to keep him alive. If you don't, it's a, it's a no bueno. So there's the, the Hex. He's probably gonna try to invigorate and run away. That's my guess. All right, he's smacking. All right, 17 damage, but damn. Because of all the adapts, he's actually getting more HP or more base HP. He can attack the uh, Snow Spinner. If he uses a spell, he might be able to kill both the Snow Spinner and the Doombringer, but that wouldn't save the Rook Ball. But on the other hand, if he is able to kill both of them, right, uh, and then the Rook Ball dies, he might be able to get both normal globes, and that's pretty big. Yeah, so there's the kill. I'm guessing it's close. He can get this normal globe. He can attack one more time, or he can run away. I mean, at this point, I don't think you're surviving, so might as well get the normal globe and run, or get the normal globe and attack. So he's gonna attack here. I'm guessing, right? This is ten. He'll die to the unholy, maybe. No. Like I said, he wants this Nora Globe. It's a big Nora Globe. It's a 93 Nora. Or sorry, a 93 Nora Nora Globe, right? So when this thing dies, I think it leaves like 30% of the Nora. So that's quite a bit. You really want this Nora Globe uh, if, you're, if your big guy dies. All right, so there's the kill. Like I said, if he gets both Nora Globes, he'll be out doing all right. If, if he doesn't get this Nora Globe or the... Um, so what I'm guessing might turn, happen this turn is Blood Phoenix dies, Rook Ball dies, and then the Nora Globe will go over to the Lonk's Adept. And then it'll be three champions versus, I'm guessing, three once he... Because once he gets these Nora Globes, he can deploy, right? But on the other hand, the Eviscerate will come out again. This Blood Tracker will hit the Long Set Up. All right, so there's the... Oh! Ah, get wrecked. Evasive. He's at four damage right now. Because, okay, this is kind of bad for him. Because... All right, so he gets both Nora Globes. But now this guy's not dead. Blood Phoenix. So he gets both Nora Globes, but he doesn't kill the Blood Phoenix. I thought he would be able to kill the Blood Phoenix as well and get both of them but that vase have really wrecked him now he wasn't able to kill this blood phoenix which means it can do ah, it's only six damage right so it's like yeah whatever you can just leave him six damage is like nothing i mean after he uh, rebirths you get a bit more but still interesting phallic trite i wonder if he's playing a lot of relics he might be playing the what's it called oh isn't that a ud equipment nah it's ud never mind not not forsaken waste I was thinking of the Manson Spire, I think it's called. All right, so you can just, ooh, he has the, this Reaper Blade has been doing so much. It's crazy. Does he have the kill here? No. Yeah, five speed only on this Cleric. Oh, he can Invigorate. He can Invig the Eternal. And then he can double tap. That's eight, eight, all right? So that's 16. And then the, will the Unholy Tomb kill him? At that start of your turns, no, so it won't. It's actually one damage off. I mean, oh wait, Invigorate wouldn't help anyway. He needs 5 AP, not 4. So, never mind. Wait, what was that? Ah, another one. Alright, and this will do so much. Look at that. 15. This thing has been doing so crazy damage. 
15 every time, basically. All right, it's doing pretty good. It's a very close game at the moment. If he can kill this phallic trite, like I, oh my god, I don't know. I don't like the liches. I hate the liches. I think they're so stupid. You just put one, you play one spell, and this is an 85 Nora champion that dies so quickly. I guess the dark favor is nice, but I don't know. Again, don't. This is also an interesting idea. Um, like I'm gonna talk a lot of philosophy today, huh? So you have to remember, I'm just a dude, right? I'm just a guy. And I don't, I, I don't have like an end all be all, um, you know, uh, like I say a lot of things, but, but you shouldn't, you shouldn't only go by what I say. You should try things out. So if I say eternal lich is shit, for example, and that's my, my opinion, um, you know, you can maybe take, a, you can put a lot of value in it because I played the game a lot, but you, you should definitely not say, okay, he said it's shit, so I should never play. You should maybe try things out first yourself, obviously. Um, and uh, don't assume that like what I say is always completely correct because um, I'm not I'm not as good as a lot of players. Like I would say I'm in top twenty percent, but that's only because like nobody plays this game. <laughs> so, ooh, okay. So we do have that mobilize. This is such a close game every game or every turn. All right, mobilize. Another okay. Should have done that first, but whatever. You know, I'm not sure if that actually matters for this though. Ooh, he's one HP off. Does the there's no aura on him. Oh, there you go. There's a kill. So he gets the kill. He can get the Norglobe. There you go. It's two champions versus three. If uh, if this Phallic Tree dies, then it's uh, at least the Eternal Lich won't come back. All right. So here's the set. Uh, this is also just what's so strong is this Kento man. Kento is just gonna be able to chill in this fawn. Look at that damage too. 17 damage. We have still again 35% extra damage right now from the Frost. So it's very close game. Sentinel is so strong. I hate. I I like Kento. I just hate Sentinel on him or her. I guess. Look at those titties. Ah, uh, you really don't like Sentinel on her. All right. So there's there's the ooh she. Uh, okay, that's fine. They survive. He'll dodge this, right? He has the no condo. All right. So there's the Arc Mage. It's now four champions versus three. Okay. There you go. So the right of there you go. The right. Okay. That's such a good. All right, all right, all right. Only because of that combo is the Eternal Lich actually okay. If that combo didn't exist, Eternal Lich is bad. But because you can do that with the Rite of Healing, and now all these champions have regen, they all healed for six. Only because of that is that actually a good... This combo, yeah. This combo is just so good that I guess you're allowed to say that the Eternal Lich is not half bad. Because he, he's going to heal for a lot now, right? He healed for six, and then now another six, six, six. How many turns? How many turns does this last hold up? Three turns, so he'll heal twice. He'll heal for 12 and all. Or I guess 18 and all with the first six healing, and then regen, regen. Right, I think. All right, there's the AoE. So, ooh, only nine damage, surprisingly. Did I miss something? Why, why did that only do nine? Some kind of magic resist that I didn't see? Oh, obviously, I'm dumb. The uh, He's partial IS, right? Partially IS. So that's reduction by three. So I should have done 12? All right, so this is now uh, the Ravager's font. Man, Frost is so strong. Frost is one of those interesting, um, okay, not interesting. It's actually one of the least interesting. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's it's kind of interesting in that it's very like standard. If you're like a good player, you'll make Frost look amazing. If you're a bad player, Frost will be like, yeah, it's okay. You know, you're like, yeah, it's Frost, whatever. But if you're a good player, this thing is. Very hard to beat. You just amp your damage gets higher. The champions in the in the theme aren't bad. Like this is a 52 noir champion that is super hard to kill because of the amplify. You have the ST bonus, which is obviously always very strong. You have some range champs, non-range champs. You're just very like versatile. It's kind of like Skizik. Skizik are also one of those things where if if it played by a good player, it's like how do you ever beat Skizik? Like I was playing Skizik. No, I was playing against Skizik. I was playing against um. What's his name? Uh, I want to say J.S. Glass because it's his uh, alt, but no. Um, what's his actual name? Oh, I forgot now. His uh, his in-game name. Wow, how did he do that much damage? Hold up. He did 16 with the Frost here and then 12 with the Spirit. Huh. I don't, don't know. Anyway, J.S. Glass. Uh, yeah, him. 
No, oh, oh, that's Priest, AP Priest, that's him. So AP Priest is JS Glass, and uh, AP Priest, I was, he was playing Skizik, and oh my god, the mid game of Skizik is so insane. They just like, the second they hit five champions, anywhere between five, and like, they have such a weird, uh, to me, a weird like uh, power swing. Where versus like the meta meta shit, they have like um it's kinda hard to explain. So Skizik, they have like a bell curve where early game they're okay but not really that good. Uh like three champions, they're like meh. And then once they hit five champions, like between three and or between the between the say five and seven, uh they're insane. Like Skizik are just so good. You just every turn you get, once you have seven champions, all you do is play one of the really big spells like Quickening or Benediction. And then you play Battle Drum, and then you play, uh, I don't know, Lead the Charge, and then you just, ooh, okay, going in. First he does the Bone Prism, now he's gonna Ritual, I'm guessing. Oh, he's hitting, all right. Gonna hit a few times with these Grave Warriors, gonna dodge these all. Anyway, and then and then Skizik, for the like, next, until, once it's late, late game, if you have like a very stall game, then you can maybe beat, win with other, other battle groups, actually, so. All right. 22 HP left. Attacks. Actually, hasn't died yet. Wow, this. Wait, what? How has this Phoenix not died yet? Am I tripping? Because he only has 6 damage, so he hasn't died yet. Wow. He's at 7. A little bit more needed. Oh, we do have the Spirit Harvest, though, right? So the Spirit Harvest will do 13. So this is a dead. There you go. So not only does he get the Phylactery, he gets the, gets the kill. He's not in the font though. He needs to place a relic, which he should have a lot of, right? Because he's playing this uh, battle group. But we did just see a spell, right? He played the. Um, he played the. Yes, that's not a champion, dude. But what am I saying? He played the mobilization, so he does play, I guess, at least one spell. I haven't been really paying attention to the other spells. Man, this game. Every turn is so close. It's like, who's winning? Is he winning? No, he's winning. Is he winning? No, he's winning. Is he winning? I can't tell. And you have to think, Elephant Gun is a, a very good player. But the Ravager is giving him really a, a run for his money, even though he hasn't played for like a year and a half or two. Then again, I would have to say that I don't, I haven't, like, Frost is quite easy to play. Like, it's quite easy to pilot, even if you haven't played for a long time. Like, it's very straightforward to kind of just keep playing champions, play spells, get amp out, right? But this deck by Elephant Gun is quite complicated, I, I assume. I mean, it has the kind of a weird thing going for it. So, uh, I would say this deck is harder to play. I'm not sure about the strength, but it's harder to play for sure. Okay, gets the kill. Ooh, a lot of damage dealt there, actually. Is this a kill, actually, because of the aura? He doesn't have aura. Never mind. I'm done. So he took 15, and then he took another, yeah, a lot of damage from that Gale Force. So like I was saying, the Ravager is playing a battle group, which is quite easy to play, but he hasn't played for a long time, so that's his advantage and disadvantage. And then it's exactly opposite for Elephant Gun. He's playing a hard deck, but he's played kind of regularly. He plays at least once a week, I think. I just, I'm just not on most of the time when he is playing. Usually I'm like sleeping or, I don't know, doing something else. All right, what's he doing now? So he's dead, right? He's gonna. Ooh, this is interesting. The no or the the death noble will go off, destroying the phylactery. I wonder. Yeah, and that means that the eternal then can't uh, revive from it. So, is there any way he can kill his eternal lich right now so he gets it back? That'd be really nice for him. He really wants to kill his eternal lich if he can. I wonder if he could play like a. A stitched, right? What if you played the Eternal Lich and then you play the um, uh, what's her name, Masindra, Syndra, or whatever, and then you get the Eternal Lich back because of the Death Null? That'd be kind of cool. I wonder if that works. And you would get a stitch from the Stitch Remains. Kind of a cool idea. Do like a Death Benefit deck, birth champions just keep coming back. Ooh, look at heal. They both gain two as well because they both have vitality creation. So vitality creation as well as the uh, divine favor, healing them up. All right, so he's probably gonna move up one and then use his aura to deal damage to the unholy, to the Valdak, and to the Phylactery. 
It's such an old champion. I remember having dreams about this champion. Like, back when I was, like... I think I started this game when I was... 10, maybe? And I had dreams about this champion. Because this is, like, one of the first champions. And I, I thought he just looked so cool. And I always thought this champion attacked things. Because he has a giant mace in his hand, right? Like, on his he has a sword and a mace. And I was like, yo, this thing could smack. This thing smacks down. has armor on. And then I was like, wait, no. It just, it just uses magic and heals. But I always... I always thought he'd smacked things, which I thought was cool. Another divine favor, now from the Crystal Phoenix. This aura will do a lot of damage though, because it's how much is the M now actually? So we have uh, 25, 10. Still only 35 actually. Not not more. You can attack here. Oh wait, this is also 10. Yeah, okay, so it's even more. Wait, he's not 10. What am I saying? What am I saying? Yeah, yeah it still is only 35. This is the only other amp damage we have. So death. I wonder if he's going to uh, holy nova these two, so he can attack the phylactery or hit the phylactery and the eternal. Oh, going over there. Okay, not a bad idea. We got eight, eight, sixteen damage just from the aura. Runs away. Now nobody's nobody has this font, so only uh, Elephant Gun is down one font. Wow, I did not. I really this whole game. I I don't know who's winning. First I thought it was Elephant Gun. Then I thought it was the Ravager. Then I thought it was Elephant Gun again. And now I'm not even sure. It might be the Ravager. I mean, if this thing dies, then he can get his font back. And then right now it is four champions up here versus like this very spread out grouping. Spread out grouping is kind of a, a yeah, not not exactly making sense, right? Uh, spread out grouping. Anyway, it's a, a spread out like these guys are all kind of close. These four champions here from uh, Elephant Gun, yeah. Uh, while the Ravager has his champions very far apart, he can not get this font actually not yet just because of the font ignorance. He, ignorance. He has to move forward with the Frost here. Font Ignorance, that's it. So you can either maybe engage the Eternal, you can run away from it. I mean, he is incorporeal, so he can't actually engage, never mind. Yeah, you can move up like this. You can Frost Nova? Can you Frost Nova? I don't know if you can Frost Nova in there, in incorporeal form. Cannot attack. All right, so he gets this font now, though. So now the Ravager will be up two fonts. But like I said, his champions are pretty spread apart. Ooh, double tap. That's a big misplay by the Ravenger, or by Elephant Gun to like be in that area. Ooh, kill. All right. Does that deal 13 damage? What did I just see deal 13 damage? The aura. God damn. That aura did 13. Oh no, it was the, the Frost Nova. My bad. There you go. That makes more sense. Now, he, if he could, he could use the uh, Rite of Healing again on this Eternal Lich, and he'll come back from this phylactery. So that's a pretty good idea if he can do that. Might as well, right? It's a very large range for the Rite as well, actually. That will cause the Spirit to be very close to dead. So if you can attack the Spirit once, and then um, get the Dark Favor to go off with the Rite of Healing, that'd be good. Yeah. Okay, so he's going to do the Rite of Healing here. Two Nor Globes right now, or at least one. Big Nor Globe. All right, there's the healing. Yeah, there's the two Nor Globes now. That's a like I said, an 85 Nora champion. There's quite a bit of Nora here. If he, I think right now he's behind because he doesn't have any fonts. But if Elephant Gun can get these two Nor Globes and deploy, and maybe you know kind of move in on his bottom font, he'll do okay. He just needs these two. He doesn't have a tank out, right? He has this Blood Phoenix. All right, there's one. Is he going to get the other one as well? He does. Very nice. Dude, this guy knows me. He knows when to get Norgalobes, and that's just uh, always. Always. Oh, another one. There's the other Flactory. And the Eternal. All right, there. So he got the kill. Yeah, he gets the kill. He's moving in on his uh, font, and he gets another Flactory out. Very nicely done. And this Extinguisher is dying. So I'm guessing he'll retreat, right? 
Look at this damage, though, already on this Yeti Spear. It's crazy. On him, too. Yeah, now there's a Norglobe over here that he can get. They're all healed up to full. Even have regen. So, like, he has regen, for example. So, really well done. This such a cool uh, cool combo right there. The, the Rite of Healing and the uh, Phylactery idea. I kind of like these uh, the sprite of this champion, too. Reminds me of like a genie. Ooh, that damage was insane. That was an insane amount of damage. Also, the healing from the uh, Acolyte. He should maybe move in just so he can get the aura on the Cleric as well. I don't know. So this Eternal... Ooh, okay. So the, the um, Seism actually kills the Unholy Tomb. So that's kind of good and bad. The Unholy Tomb got a lot of Nora for him, for Elephant Gun. But on the other hand, this Eternal Lich will come back from this phylactery, right? So the so it will still be five champions. Versus four, and this one's pretty weak. He'll, the Jackie Lich, or sorry, the Jackie Extinguisher will die this turn, I'm very positive. That means it will be three, no, four champions versus five, but you can't really call Whoa. count the Crystal Phoenix. Oh, sorry. All right. Oh my God, look at that damage. 24 damage in aura. All right, so there's that. Again, wow. So much damage being dealt by this Dark Favor. It's really nice. All right, so what is he going to do? Is he going to move back or is he going to attack? All right. Can he still get the Norglobe? Yeah, okay. So he's going to get his font. Um, he can get this Norglobe. He can attack the Extinguisher and kill it. He gets both Norglobes. So even though he's down, he... he, he oh, my God, these phylacteries, I swear. Like Even if... Uh, you know, the Phylactery dies, it still wastes an attack, right? So, yeah. Yeah, man, he's, Elephant Gun's really been staying in this game by just, like, taking Noro Globes. <laughs> like, he's got all of them. All right, guys, be quiet, please. All right, I'm gonna... All right, let's put this on non-full screen, just so you guys don't have to look at my... Boom, okay. Go over here. There you go. And no, it's it's still happening. It's still happening, guys. What do I do? How do I mute? Mute. There we go. I muted it. What's happening? You don't know. Ah, why isn't it working? I said full screen. There we go. So well, I I I wasn't wasn't paying attention. The Crystal Phoenix got the Nora Globe. I'm guessing. Is that what happened? Phylactery takes five frost damage. This, what, this thing, because he's hexed. Ah, okay. I was like, why did he just take five? Man, hex doesn't work. Wait, I just, what? It's muted, guys. I don't know why he still does damage. It's, uh, sounds are still coming out of here. Wait, click. There. Oh, there's like a lag. When you click mute. Man. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six versus one, two, three, four. But it's two fonts versus one. We have another phylactery here, though. And on that note, the Blood Phoenix hasn't died yet, so the rebirth is still coming if he dies. So this thing will still happen. So it's actually, he's really doing really well, Elephant Gun is. These phylacteries are doing so much dark, like the, the Eternal Lich, I guess. The dark Favor is doing so much work. It's kind of cray. I kind of want to drink some coffee, but it's 11.08 p.m., and I shouldn't, but I really feel like just drinking a coffee. And I finally, finally puts his uh, war banner in a safe spot instead of always having to contest with it. All right, so you can move in, kill the phoenix, but like I said, the phoenix will come back. And then it's like, eh, you know, it'll still be six versus five, three. He's so far behind now in champions, and there's not much he can do. And there's no, there's no uh, tank out right here right now, so getting into this font might be a bit hard. But 
We do have a Archmage coming out soon with the Bone Prison. We have these Eternal Liches, you know, chilling. You could Ritual Destruction it. You could Ritual Destruction his own. Actually, wait, this only works on summons, so never mind. He could Rite of Healing it again in three turns. Is he going to surrender here? I think he's pretty far behind. Even though he's a Fawn up, I think he's pretty far behind. Okay. Smack, smack. Pace will be dead, but like I said, he's come back, so. 16 damage is nice, though. Like, having a 5 6 range, 16 damage is crazy. Oh, look at that. Now he has 50 HP, 13 damage. He's plus 7. Plus 7 because he gets plus um, 4 from the Reborn, two from, 1 from the War Banner, and 2 actually from the Augment Creation. He's at, he's at 13 damage. Ooh, okay. Shards here is crazy because uh, multi-attack rank 2 on a frost attack champion. So he'll be doing, how much is he doing? Yeah, 16 a tap. So he can do 32 damage a turn if uh, anything is in range. So making sure the shards here doesn't die is very important. If shards here die, that's GG. All right, Hex, yeah, okay, definitely Hexing this. Or, or that, okay, he wants to kill, probably. He keeps using that. He keeps using Bane Blast. But I don't know. I mean, he doesn't have any Paralyzed, does he? Like, why Why play that as your go-to spell? It's not a horrible spell or anything, but... I don't know. Bane Blast is like, meh. I, I don't think Spirit Harvest is up, though, is it? He just has an attack here? Or does he have Spirit Harvest up again? That'd be pretty big. Well, they're thought Yeah, it's probably GG here. Wait, it says, what game? Holding off T1 decks like a boss. Yeah, man, he is. T1 meaning tier 1, obviously. Yeah, I mean, like I said, while this is a very... This is a tier 1 deck, Frost, right? Um, it's pretty easy to pilot. And it's very strong, but you know the Ravager hasn't played in so long, so very fun game though. Very awesome to watch. I love that that back and forth you don't get often, right? So a lot you can learn here. This is one of probably one of the better games I've had in a very long time in the last like half year. It's probably one of the best games I've had or I've seen. I really wish that would have gone longer. Um, I hope they play again, maybe with different decks. Anyway, GG.